Welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. This time, a special one. A close friend of mine and co-founder of Grove House, owner of two fabulous restaurants in Brooklyn, Lilia and Missy. I'm joined by the amazing Sean Feeney. Sean, thank you so much for joining us here on the Yes Network. Uh, it's so good to see your face, brother. Even though you're in, uh, in LA, it's good to see your face over here in Brooklyn. Well, it's great to see you too. Um, I got to get into it. I know you're a big fan of the Yankees and the Nets and you're watching the network. So for us, it's a pleasure to have you on our broadcast. Um, let's talk about your businesses. Tell us a little bit about what you do and the businesses that you run around New York. Sure. Well, first, I will say I'm, I miss so much right now watching my Nets uh, who would be starting in the playoffs right now and, and obviously a lifelong Yankees fan. I miss, I miss seeing them and, and hearing all the all the guys call those games, and also you on NYCFC. I'm, I miss it all right now, but better days are coming. Um, and I guess, you know, for me, every day is a good day, and, and none are, are easy. That's kind of the way I've always lived my life, and um, it's helped me through, through this time. We have uh, two restaurants in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, Lilia and Missy, and we have 189 um, team members that on March 15th we had to tell uh, our doors were no longer safe for them to walk into. And it's been, you know, uh, about 34 days now since we haven't seen them or, or guests that we've been able to have in our restaurants to take care of. And it's, it's definitely been challenging. I'm, I'm someone that jumps out of bed every morning, excited to physically connect with whoever crosses my path and to help make their day better. And um, so not to be able to do that right now is, is, it's tough. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like KD without a basketball or, or um, Aaron Judge without a bat or Jay-Z without a beat. But, you know, fortunately, if you look at it in a positive way, we can impact people's lives differently. Where I, I don't need a hoop, I don't need a mic or, or those giant biceps like Aaron Judge. Um, you just got to try to be creative right now. Tell us maybe a little bit about what you've been doing since you've had to close the doors. How have you been getting creative with your business and industry since the doors have been closed? Sure. Well, for the first two weeks we were closed, we really focused hard on taking care of the people that were on our team that were part of our restaurant families. And we did that in a form of a recovery plan. And the first part of that plan was to make sure that they were taken care of up until the moment that we closed those doors. They were getting paid. They were getting health care. They were going to get their sick pay and paid time off that they would have accumulated through this year. They were going to get it up front now. And the second part of that plan was then knowing that once we did have to lay them off, they were going on unemployment benefits. And at that time, it was going to cut their income by at least half. So we wanted to make a bridge for them to get through this moment where they were going to be making at least half to when we finally did get to open again. And we started a fund family fund, Grove House Family Fund, where we've raised over $200,000 now. And 100% of that money was raised from our community, the people that came to our restaurants for the past four years for the people that were serving them. And 100% goes to our, our employees, the family of our restaurants. And um, it, it's been able to give them more comfort and protection during this time of uncertainty and the last part of that plan was to get everybody excited so that when we did open up again, they were incentivized to be with us in this thing. And Missy, my partner, and I decided that we were going to make sure that everybody that got through this time with us and, and once we did reopen our doors, we're going to uh, participate in our profits as if they were partners with us and owners of the restaurant throughout this year. We're going to start a grocery store now where we were going to open this business in 2021. Now we're going to do it in the form of a weekly grocery bag where we're curating the produce, the proteins, the pantry that we would build through our restaurants that we cook in our restaurants with. And now you're going to be able to buy it from us and cook it in your home. So right now, because of the distancing, because of the ability to just stay in home, we're going to essentially create those dining experiences that make your day better that you would normally get in our restaurants. But now we're going to give you the tools to do it in your home with the ones you love. That's and awesome. the best part about the idea is that we're essentially for every bag that we sell, Missy and I, Grove House, our company, will give a bag to 
um, students who we help employ um, and mentor in our restaurants from the food and finance high school in Manhattan. We have a bunch of these students that work with us who also live in Brooklyn, and we're going to be able to give them a bag so their families can have the meals for that week. So every bag that we sell, those families will give to them. What a fabulous idea, Sean. That really is quite incredible, thinking out of the box. And that's what I'm really enjoying about this. I know it's an unfortunate circumstance for so many people out there, um, but people are getting really creative. And I'm starting to see a lot of joy in that creativity from people in all walks of life. And you're certainly leading the way in the, the, the food and drinks industry. I've got to ask you this. What do you personally miss most about going to work every day? Ah, it's just the people, just see, just seeing them, seeing my, my team. Uh, I'm a big, like, I, I just love to be with people physically to try and help make their day better. And, um, I just miss that interaction of, uh, physical connection and building trust and just trying to see those, those just picking people up and, and going through a day together. I miss that. I miss, uh, I miss seeing smiling faces in, in the restaurants. It's like going to Yankee Stadium without any um, fans. And obviously, we're going to have to get used to some of this. But uh, again, every day is a good day. We, we have the ability to make each, each day great. And I think just, you know, New Yorkers, what I've, you know, fortunately have, have learned is that New Yorkers, they just um, – they're at their best when, when times are the worst. And it's a really powerful thing. It makes our city great. It makes it the best in the world. And it is the city that never sleeps. But it's, um, it's, it's just it's a nap right now. And uh, I'm watching so many people spread love. And it's not just the Brooklyn way. It's the New York way. And, and it gives me strength and energy. I see... You know, during this time, it's our darkest moment. Um, I have so many people that work with us and, and so many people that have been guests just reaching out and saying, are you all right? Are you okay? Meanwhile, I'm the one that's always trying to do that for people. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's that it's working, that love that's being spread, it's working. And New York City always comes back. It just does. And it will once again. And we'll, we'll remake it. You know, so many people, we try to make it here. And we'll remake it here. But now we get to do it together, which has been, it's just been a beautiful thing. And, and, and something that's given me so much energy and strength in the worst time. Sean Feeney, thank you so much for your time, man. Good luck. God bless. And I can't wait to visit you again in Lilia. All right, brother. Stay safe and healthy. I can't wait to see you soon. I can't wait to uh, invite everybody back in and, and make their day better. Thanks, John. Thank you, brother.